Hi, it's Pastor Tim, and it's the third Wednesday in Lent, and I'm coming to you from an empty church space because we are practicing social distancing uh, due to the Wuhan coronavirus or COVID-19 virus. And we would have been going through the Stations of the Cross, continuing to go through those. Today was supposed to be uh, the Stations uh, 7, 8, and 9, and so I thought I would do that for you briefly in this video. Uh, so I'm doing this in this empty space, but as I've heard it said before, that uh, in a crisis like this, sometimes love looks like an empty church. And so uh, we'll keep that in mind as we reflect upon and consider uh, stations seven, eight, and nine of the Stations of the Cross uh, and of the ultimate love shown us by our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so um, I'm gonna rotate the camera here a little bit and I'm going to get station seven right there. And this is station seven, Jesus falls a second time. Even with help, Jesus stumbles and falls to the ground. In deep exhaustion, he stares at the earth beneath him. Scripture says, remember you are dust and to dust you will return. He has seen death before. Now he can feel the profound weakness of disability and disease and aging itself there on his knees under the weight of his holy cross. I contemplate Jesus brought very low as I behold him there on the ground with all the agony taking its toll on him. My heart goes out to him. This is so hard. I will store up this image in my heart, for it will help me remember that I never again have to feel alone in my suffering. When my body eventually fails me, I will carry with me this image of Jesus on the ground. I'm going to rotate now and come over to Station eight. There we go. Station number eight, Jesus and the women of Jerusalem. The women of Jerusalem and their children come out to comfort and thank Jesus. During his ministry, they had experienced his compassion and healing and words of comfort and grace. He had broken all kinds of social and religious conventions to connect with them. Now they are here to support him. He feels their grief. He suffers, knowing he can't remain to help them more in his life. Jesus knows the sadness of facing the separation of death. I look at the faces of these women, so full of love and gratitude, loss and fear. I contemplate what words might have passed between them. I remember all his tender, compassionate, merciful love for me. I place myself with these women and children to support him. Okay, we'll move on to our final station for today, station number nine. <clears throat> I think I got it here. Okay. Station nine. Jesus falls a third time. This last fall is devastating. His body hits the ground so hard. Jesus can barely proceed to the end. He is summoning all his remaining strength, supported by his inner trust in God. Still, Jesus collapses under the weight of the cross. His executioners look at him as a broken man, pathetic yet paying the price a criminal deserves. 
They help him up so he can make it up the hill of crucifixion. I pause to contemplate him there on the ground. The brokenness that makes me whole. The surrender that gives me life. I pause to experience and receive how completely he loves me. He is indeed completely poured out for me. We'll close with a final prayer. I invite you now to please bow your heads in an attitude of prayer as I pray. Almighty God, each week as we follow Jesus' Via Dolorosa, be with us in a special way to help us recall and reflect in our hearts who you are and what you have done through him for us. O oh, Heavenly Father, send down your abundant blessing upon us as we contemplate the sacrificial life, redemptive suffering, crucifixion and death of your dear Son. Grant us pardon and bring us comfort. May our faith in Christ grow ever deeper, and may we continually grow in the wonderful assurance of our eternal salvation. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.